Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And in joy, we gather in faith to celebrate the risen Christ, the presence of the risen Christ in our midst. Jesus has been risen from the tomb. But how often, beloved in Christ, we still live in the tombs of fear and anxiety and worry. Let us contemplate these moments, beloved in Christ, those moments we still remain in the tomb. In faith, we confess by saying, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory. Glory to God in the highest and on earth be to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We pray to you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty. In the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest and on earth to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Most High. You alone are the Most High. The Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people 
Angel of good will glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. People of good will. People of good will. Let us pray as we celebrate Saturday within the octave of Easter. O God, who by the abundance of your grace give increase to the peoples who believe in you, look with favor on those you have chosen and clothe them with blessed immortality, those reborn through the sacrament of baptism. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The rulers, elders, and scribes were astonished at the assurance shown by Peter and John, considering they were uneducated laymen. And they recognized them as associates of Jesus. But when they saw the man who had, cured sta who had been cured standing by their side, they could find no answer. So they ordered them to stand outside while the Sanhedrin had a private discussion. What are we going to do with these men? They asked, it is obvious to everybody in Jerusalem that a miracle has been working through them in public, and we cannot deny it. But to stop the whole thing spreading any further among the people, let us caution them never to speak to anyone in the name again. So they called them in and gave them a warning on no account to make statements or to teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John retorted, you must judge whether in God's eyes it is right to listen to you and not to God. We cannot promise to stop proclaiming what we have seen and heard. The court repeated the warnings and then released them. They could not think of any way to punish them since all the people were giving glory to God for what had happened. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. I will thank you, Lord, for you have given answer. I will thank you, Lord, for you have given answer. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. The Lord is my strength and my song. He was my savior. There are shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the just. I will thank, thank you, Lord, Lord, Lord for, for you have given, given answer. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. His right hand raised me up. I shall not die. I shall live and recount his deeds. I was punished. I was punished by the Lord, but not doomed to die. I will, I will thank, thank you, Lord, Lord for you, you have, have given, given answer. answer. Open to me the gates of holiness, I will enter and give thanks. This is the Lord's own gate where the just may enter. I will thank you for you have given answer and you are my savior. I will, I will thank, thank you, Lord, Lord for, for you have, have given, given answer. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Beloved, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Having risen in the morning on the first day of the week, Jesus appeared first to Mary of Magdala, from whom he had cast out seven devils. 
She then went to those who had been his companions and who were mourning and in tears and told them. But they did not believe her when they heard her say that he was alive and that she had seen him. After this, he showed himself on the, another form to two of them as they were on their way into the country. These went back and told the others, who did not believe them either. Lastly, he showed himself to the eleven themselves while they were at table. He reproached them for their, for their obstinacy because they had refused to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news to all creation. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. In the Acts of the Apostles, I am struck by the line that says, it is impossible for us not to speak about what we have seen and heard what we have seen and heard. Beloved in Christ, you and I have had profound and impacting encounters that have changed our lives significantly. These encounters may have been simple and unassuming, or it may have been grandiose or an extravagant. These encounters may have been, for example, a weekend retreat or a day of recollection in which, as a result of the entire experience, as a result of the entire encounter, it changed your lives. It may have been an encounter in which you experienced the generosity of a stranger who may have said a simple word of thanks or may have helped you in any unassuming and simple way. These encounters may have been the powerful touch that you experience in encountering a religious leader, for example, St. John Paul II or St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta. As a result of encountering them, you may have felt something different. Or it may have been the homily or a word or a talk given by someone. But these encounters left you with that conviction that it is impossible for you not to speak about what you have seen and what you have encountered. I recall, for example, beloved in Christ, once on the morning before celebrating a Mass, I was feeling very exhausted and very tired. And just a simple greeting of a parishioner who said to me, Father, good morning. How are you? It was amazing the feeling I, I felt, how that simple greeting, that simple concern, how are you, changed my life, changed how I felt. It was impossible for me not to speak about what I've seen and heard. And so, beloved in Christ, in this Mass, we are graced to be listening to the scripture readings because members of the early church took that missionary disposition that it is impossible not to speak about what they had seen and what they had heard. What is it, beloved in Christ? What is it that they, the early church, the members of the early church had seen and heard? Beloved in Christ, they witness the life suffering and death of Jesus of Nazareth. But more importantly, beloved in Christ, the one who had died, the one who had been buried, they now encounter in a mysterious form, in a risen state that confirmed his preaching that he would suffer, die, and rise on the third day. This was an incredible experience that changed their lives and boosted their faith. 
in a word, beloved in Christ, the mercy and compassion that they lived, that Jesus lived and preached prior to his death and burial was that same mercy and compassion that they experienced in his risen state. And so in Acts of the Apostles, today's first reading, notwithstanding the threat of persecution, notwithstanding the threat of punishment, Peter and John refused to be quiet about what they have seen and what they have heard. Even the healed man, by virtue of him standing next to Peter and John in public, was a testimony that he too was willing to speak, though non-verbally, what he had seen and what he had heard in the preaching and the healing of Peter and John. He refused, and so he was willingly publicly to stand and to stand with them. Also, beloved in Christ, we see in the gospel, Mary of Magdala, having encountered the risen Christ, she refused to keep quiet about what she had seen and what she had heard. She had seen the risen Christ. She had encountered the risen Christ. She refused to be quiet. So too, beloved in Christ, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus who had encountered the risen Christ, and this encounter had changed their lives, they too refused to be quiet about what they have seen and what they have heard. And at the very end of the gospel reading, beloved in Christ, Jesus told his disciples, go and proclaim to the whole world what you have seen and what you have heard. Beloved in Christ, even the psalmist captures and summarizes what the disciples had experienced. And so in the responsorial psalm, beloved in Christ, what did we sing? I will give thanks, for you have answered me. Even the psalmist refused to be quiet. And so, beloved in Christ, as the church traverses this very unprecedented, unusual time that we have named COVID-19 pandemic, so many of you have witnessed the power of the risen Christ at work in your families, among your friends and neighbors. I hear so many testimonies, so many moving and powerful testimonies of people deepening family relationships during this, this time of restriction. I've heard testimony of people spending more time in prayer. I've heard testimony of people showing more care and compassion for strangers, for neighbors, for family members. I've heard testimonies of persons whose lives have changed. I've heard testimonies of people who are exercising greater communication via the social media platform, WhatsApp, emails, communicating, checking with neighbors and friends. How are you doing, beloved in Christ? As church, we have been witnessing powerful changes during this COVID time. All is not doom and gloom. Miracles are taking place. Changes are happening in people's lives. Let us therefore pray for the grace of boldness and courage, the boldness and courage of the members of the early church like Peter and John to continue reaching out and bringing healing, bringing consolation, comfort to others. When it is time, beloved in Christ, for the church to leave the upper room, according to Archbishop Gordon, let us leave the upper room and go and boldly and courageously speak about what we have seen and experience in the upper room. Let us not remain quiet. Let us not be fearful. 
but let us take with us that very spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Let us allow that spirit to give us boldness and courage in proclaiming what we have seen and what we have heard. Amen. And so, loved, beloved in Christ, let us turn to God, our Father, who always provide His grace to enable us to be bold and courageous. And let us pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all his collaborators throughout the world, particularly his collaborators within the, the Caribbean, the bishops and archbishops, and the Antilles Episcopal Conference, that God may give them a spirit of boldness and courage to lead and pastor this church, especially during this time of crisis, especially during this time as the church traverses the valley of the shadow of death. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for an outpouring of wisdom, an outpouring of courage and boldness, particularly among our government leaders, those in those leaders of CARICOM, that God may give them a spirit of sharing, a spirit of collaboration, a spirit of listening and generosity as they lead the Caribbean nations through these very challenging, difficult times. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We offer to the Lord this morning as we continue to do so, the medical fraternity, those who are caring for the sick, especially those with the disease, that God may protect them from all evil, from all harm, that God may give them the courage and the strength to persevere during these trials. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And certainly we pray for the sick especially those who are sick with this disease. As they journey, Lord, through this valley of the shadow of death, give them courage, deepen their faith, and their trust in you as the healer. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we continue to offer to you our children, the weak and the vulnerable, those who are at home, that you may protect them, guide them, and give them courage, and that you also may give their parents wisdom and understanding as their parents care for them and journey with them during these difficult times. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And let us now, beloved in Christ, close our prayers. We pray the prayer to our O oh God, who by the grace of your Holy Spirit temper the soul of Anthony Panton with fortitude and humility and raise him to be priest and archbishop of the Archdiocese of Port of Spain so that he may be bearer of your life-giving word to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Grant us grace to be strong in faith, humbly confident in your aid, and tireless in doing good. Bestow on us, we humbly pray, through the intercession of this beloved servant of yours, Gordon Anthony Panton, the special grace which we seek from your own. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Pray, beloved, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God and the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name. For our good and good Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of, un of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, we are, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and a drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of a faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles, Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. just partake 
partaken of the body and blood of Christ. We have been nourished by this food of life. And the Spirit of the Lord, the one who raised Jesus from the dead, is also with us. Notwithstanding the, the reality that so many of our people are not able to receive that body and blood of Christ. However, we believe that the Spirit of God lives in you. And the Spirit of God continues to unite all of us together. Though physically separated, the Spirit of God has united us. And in this unity, the Spirit of God continues to give us strength and to give us courage and boldness to carry on the mission of the church. And so notwithstanding the physical distance, notwithstanding the, the challenges that we currently encounter, we still, through the power of the Holy Spirit, continue His mission because we are united. We are united. We are one. And so let us close with our act of spiritual communion as we pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. My Lord, I feed on you each day I live. My Lord, I taste your love each day I breathe. The joy I know is nothing but your grace be stored on me this bread. Oh Lord, you fed me, saved me from my sin. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the good news by your lives. My Lord, he died for a kingdom to reveal the hearts of men. Now my Indeed, alleluia. Sing alleluia. The Lord is risen. He is risen. Indeed, alleluia. My Lord, He came for like a mountain to the render of the sun. A triumphant from the world, from the darkness of the tomb, the victory's won. Alleluia. Sing alleluia. Yeah.